Yeah. Okay. So good afternoon. Uh, this uh, particular eight lectures, uh, we are going to see kind of introduction to ring theory. Basically, we are uh, going to deal mostly with uh, polynomial rings. Okay. So first two lectures, some of the concepts you know already, we are going to recall. Okay. So we start with uh, the abstract definition of a ring. A ring R is set is a set with the two composition law or binary law. Uh, so we basically write like a plus and a, a cross. So we call it addition and multiplication. Uh, with respect to addition, it is an abelian group with the identity element as a zero element zero. We write it like zero. The abelian group generally at least R in uh, denoted by R plus. Okay, it is closed under the multiplication other operation and uh, multiplication is associative with also. And one more property we always assume is uh, multiplication as identity element, which is uh, denoted by one. It's the zero element with respect to plus and one with respect to, I mean, uh, other operation called multiplication. And the other property is com combining distribute, distributive law. Okay. So any set uh, having two operations uh, satisfying these three kind of condition, we call it a ring. Okay. A sub ring is a ring, which is a uh, sub ring of a ring, which is a subset, uh, which is closed under addition, uh, all the addition, subtraction, and multiplication the, with respect to the two operations. Uh, and which contains the element one. We always insist uh, the element one, the unit element, uh, the you not unit element, the identity element exists, okay, in that sub ring. Okay, so he, here I have not completed this line. A ring R is said to be commutative ring. With respect to multiplication, already with respect to one operation, we know it is abelian group. So with respect to the other operation, it should be commuting. A times A cross B equal to B cross A. Okay, then uh, a ring R is said to be commutative ring with additional one more property, which is uh, with respect to the multiplication. Uh, a, A cross B. A, A cross B equal to B cross A for all A comma B inside uh, R. Okay, so some examples we want to see. Here, uh, of course, there is a typo here uh, already. So, we take we, we take the collection of all matrices m by m cross m not m cross n which will not give the multiplication uh, obviously you would have checked it the set of all matrices with real entries i have taken uh, with coefficients coming from uh, real number uh, this forms a ring under usual matrix addition so because it is usual matrix addition it is an abelian group and the matrix with respect to matrix multiplication uh, together it uh, it's a committed it's a non commutative ring okay it forms a ring structure and uh, this set is a non commutative ring in general okay so th this is uh, already we know the next uh, one is uh, suppose r is a ring abstract ring and uh, I, we can construct another uh, using the abstract ring we can construct another another ring called polynomial ring so formal formal polynomials uh, with coming from coefficients are coming from this uh, ring r okay so the formal polynomial how do we write uh, we write like uh, a n x power n x is a variable etc uh, up to a not where a not a is are uh, coming from the uh, the ring r and n is a natural number okay and uh, n is natural number means n is greater than or equal to zero and a n the leading coefficient we call it uh, the a n -th, uh, x power n -th coefficient uh, a n which is, should not be zero okay these are the formal kind of uh, polynomials so rx denotes the set of all polynomials with coefficients coming from the ring r uh, this this forms a ring first of all we we can add two polynomials we can multiply two polynomials, okay? So with respect to this usual polynomial addition and uh, multiplication, 
this rx forms a ring or fx forms a ring this is a commutative ring the another example is collect all uh, continuous functions from uh, a real number r to r i mean real number r to r f is continuous on r then this this is a commutative ring with respect to function addition i mean we know f is a continuous g is continuous f plus g is continuous f times g is continuous so therefore we can form this uh, multiply uh, we can form this uh, operation uh, we can put this operation in this set r uh, script r okay so with respect to this again we can check all these properties with respect to this uh, this forms a ring and uh, in the, indeed it is a commutative ring just because r the real number r is commuting okay f of x times g of x is same as g of x times f of x that is the reason okay so the we define some as i am where i am kind of following um, arc in algebra uh, my um, my book is a volume i mean edition 1 okay so it this notes is basically from arc in algebra book okay so another example we want to give before that we just write a definition uh, alpha is a complex number alpha uh, suppose alpha is a complex number such that it is a root of some polynomial with integer coefficients okay so polynomial is denoted by f of x little f of x uh, with okay so with of degree d then we call this uh, an algebraic number okay yeah. otherwise otherwise means if alpha uh, is a complex number which is not root of any polynomial with uh, with coefficients coming from integers then we call that to be transcendental number okay <clears throat> okay so we want to kind of uh, look at the polynomial ring is z is a ring uh, the set of all integers it forms a ring Uh, it's a commutative ring, and uh, we can uh, look at the polynomial ring with uh, with coefficients coming from z, z x. Okay, so in you take an algebraic number alpha uh, with uh, leading coefficient is one, uh, a d is one. Okay, a d is the kind of degree I am assuming here. Uh, consider the polynomial ring and plug the value uh, x equal to alpha in. If what is z alpha z alpha is a kind of uh, z alpha is kind of complex numbers containing complex numbers of the form f of alpha where f of x is any polynomial in zx okay but we can use the relation satisfied by alpha to simplify this uh, kind of elements in the in this okay so how do we simplify the elements uh suppose uh, alpha is satisfies the uh, polynomial uh, of degree d okay then we can we can write uh, alpha power, we get the relation uh, with coefficients coming from integers alpha power d plus a d minus 1 alpha power d minus 1 etc a not is zero uh okay <clears throat> therefore any element g of alpha Uh, we can suppose if in the g of alpha g of x is a polynomial coming from z x if alpha power k is uh, in it's coming inside the g of alpha then we replace this uh, alpha power k by the smaller powers i mean the linear combination integer linear combination of so smaller powers using this relation okay so therefore g of alpha always we can write like uh, this way so this way the integer linear combination of 1 alpha alpha power d minus 1 okay so for any element of this particular set we can rewrite in terms of this okay this 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 forms a ring mm, this forms a ring why because just a usual way uh, we can add two elements once it is when we when uh, we add two elements we we multiply two elements when we multiply two elements the alpha power goes up but we reduce it to 
uh, we reduce it to you using this relation we can reduce and uh, we put it in this form so this forms a ring in fact this is the smallest subring of c containing alpha okay so with respect okay, in this way this z alpha is the subring of c generated by alpha we kind of say it so the same instead of uh, algebraic number if we take a transcendental number alpha suppose alpha is a transcendental number then z of alpha is like uh, just plug the value uh, plug x equal to alpha uh, where uh, you take any uh, any polynomial in zx and plug x equal to alpha that is the kind of okay this is the collection of all complex numbers of the form f of alpha where f is varying over all the polynomials in zx here we cannot uh, simplify like uh, what we simplified before previous example because uh, alpha was algebraic here alpha is not an algebraic uh, to see this if we see this uh, take two different distinct polynomial and plug value uh, the value cannot be uh, value has to be distinct why because if value is same since p p1 and p2 are two distinct uh, polynomial the difference is uh, g of x suppose then it is not a zero polynomial therefore when we plug uh, alpha we get uh, g of alpha is zero it means alpha is an algebraic number we get the while subtracting p1 minus p2 we again get uh, g of x which is a uh, which which lies in zx only okay so this is a contradiction that's that is the reason this is uh, you cannot simplify in this z alpha when where alpha is a transcendental number so what is this says this says that if we take a map from the polynomial ring zx to the another ring z alpha okay so by sending any polynomial px to p of alpha this map is bijective that's what it says is the the previous argument says it is injective and uh, given any element in this z alpha the corresponding instead of alpha you put x then you will get uh, it's a surjective also okay so if alpha is algebraic then we can simplify this ring if alpha is not algebraic then we we cannot simplify this ring like the previous one okay any field any field 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 means uh, just i recall uh, with respect to two operations uh, this uh, this field is a group and it is commutative group uh, and distributive law exists okay so any field is a ring commutative ring in fact so r is uh, if you take it to be just a singleton zero then it is a zero uh, ring this is also a ring which consists of only one element here uh, you may think that uh, okay one doesn't exist one is same as zero in zero ring okay so why because you see zero times zero is equal to zero only one element exists therefore it is automatically it's like a identity kind of it satisfies okay in the definition of field the multiplicative identity one is uh, required to lie inside uh, f minus 0 okay why because uh, hence you see the field means field means it has at least two distinct elements 0 and 1 uh, but ring can be just a uh, uh, single term that is nothing but zero ring okay so but in field means uh, at least two distinct element it, it should exist so okay so this the following proposition clears uh, one particular that uh, the example 6 this is the only example uh, let r be a ring in which one is same as zero then r must be a zero ring so so if it is zero ring if r is okay this this tells you that one is not equal to zero means it is not going to be a zero ring this is what it says okay just uh, use the definition one equal to zero uh, to prove that uh, r is r cannot have non zero element r must be a zero uh, ring okay 
so though multiplicative inverses are not uh, required to exist in a ring but a particular element may have inverse okay if it exists uh, then it is it should be unique here okay we are not uh, going to check uh, you, you can check it elements which have multiplicative inverses are called units okay so these are all kind of uh, we are going to talk uh, more about this uh, nomenclatures unit means in a ring unit means it's a it which has a multiplicative inverse for instance uh, in z uh, multiplicative uh, i mean units are plus 1 and minus 1 in uh, polynomial ring rx uh, the units are non zero constant polynomials which are units which are coming from uh, elements of uh, real number non zero real numbers all non zero real numbers are units in uh, the polynomial ring rx in a field f any non zero element is a unit that is by definition of field okay so if r is not a zero ring then the identity element 1 is always a unit why by definition it is okay okay so we just uh, so we have seen one variable polynomial now we just uh, recall what is uh, several variable polynomial ring a ring of polynomials in several variables r is a ring and uh, x1 x2 xn or n variables are given okay so r of x1 x x1 comma x2 comma x xn this is a several variable polynomial ring so we want to define this how elements are going to look like in this ring so a monomial first we define a monomial a monomial is a formal product of variable powers of very uh, formal product of variables x1 x2 xn which is of the form x1 power i1 a uh, product uh, xn power in for some non negative integers i1 i2 in okay so this this form we call it mono, monomial a polynomial we denote it by f of x1 x2 xn uh, with coefficients coming from the ring r is a finite linear combination of monomials with coefficients coming from r okay just like uh, f of x1 x2 xn is a kind of finite sum the sum is over the multi kind of in i mean it's i is i is a kind of element in non non zero uh, non negative integers uh, a tuple n tuple kind of okay so the coefficient uh, index also i denote it by this capital i so ai capital i is a kind of a coefficient of this monomial uh, x1 power i1 etc xn power i2 so so it's a finite linear combination okay so, which is just when n equal to 1 we get back our uh, polynomial usual polynomial in single variable this is just a generalization okay so you collection of all such uh, finite linear combinations is this particular set r of x1 x2 xn okay r of x1 x2 xn is a ring uh, under okay so how do we we want to make it a kind of ring structure we want to give a ring structure uh, so how do we give a ring structure uh, just uh, we add we can add two polynomials in single variable similarly here also we can add two polynomials in several variables so if the index set uh, that uh, n tuples are same then it gets added up in the coefficient okay otherwise it will added up just uh, general okay so since uh, two polynomial when i add uh, two finite uh, sums i am adding so what i will get is an, an, another finite sum okay so so this addition lies it's is closed in fact uh, we can check that uh, addition is uh, uh, under with respect to this polynomial addition uh, addition this uh, this is a abelian group okay and uh, multiplication so how do we multiply a single variable uh, polynomial uh, two polynomials f of x and uh, g of x uh, okay here i 
here and some somewhere it will come the multiplication okay here here it comes suppose f and g are uh, two polynomials uh, in single variable okay yes neha uh, raised hand hello yeah sorry sir sorry to disturb uh, on page 7 top this bar sign is is that equal to page 7 where you were defining the definition of polynomial ring over n variables yeah i think yeah i raised the hand when you were defining this this is f o, it's all the functions f which is which are equal to this sum yeah which are equal to this okay. yeah yeah all finite sums uh, okay yeah. i have not written this f of x1 x2 xn equal to this okay yeah. sure yeah. this kind of sum okay <clears throat> so the multiplication how we are going to multiply uh, okay mm, okay here it is so single variable multiplication suppose f f of x and g of x is a single variable polynomial uh with uh, f of x can be written as like uh, summation ai x power i and uh, g of x can be written as uh, summation p p j x power j then we are multiplying f times g this is the usual multiplication in single variable okay uh, summation uh, ai bj x power i plus j okay so similar way we can do that okay similar way we can do that or uh the way way it was done is kind of uh, uh vector space and uh, mean kind of uh, coordinates okay so similar way we can do this here also for n variables okay so we we can able to discuss in the if if needed uh, we can discuss in the next tutorial okay so how it is multiplied so here con uh, this uh, uh with respect to mul uh, multiplication what is uh, one one identity element here multiplication identity element here it is just uh, what is one here anybody can answer in this r of x1 x2 xn it's constant. the constant function 1 uh well no you see one is uh, coming from r the ring r One R, one R, and uh, rest all uh, is constant function one R. You see, it's a constant function one. It can be real number. Here it is not a real number. Here R is a ring, abstract ring. So constant function one R. Okay, the identity okay, from there. Okay, so this is a kind of. Uh, kind of yeah so this is uh, some examples for uh, ring so in this uh, course of uh, lecture we are mostly going to deal with uh, commutative rings unless otherwise specified okay we are we are interested in polynomial rings uh, th that is the reason we are going to look at only commutative rings okay okay so we recall uh, homomorphisms and ideals so what is homomorphism homomorphism is a function uh, suppose r uh, two rings are given r and r prime uh, and uh, we have a map uh, uh, we have a map uh, phi from r to r prime satisfying certain conditions then we call it a homomorphism so we have already i mean if we assume the group theory part uh, with respect to addition this this is a additive homomorphism okay here one more structure is there therefore uh, we impose the multiplication multiplicative homomorphism also so the first condition says it is additive homomorphism and the second condition says it is a multiplicative homomorphism okay and the third condition we are imposing this is needed i will have uh, i will have the discussion below uh, this you see the 1r is the unit element in this uh, ring r 1 r prime is the unit element in the ring r prime okay so this this function takes 1 r to 1 r prime okay 
that these three conditions are required to say if the function map is a homomorphism from the ring r to r prime of course here uh, you see the plus and dot etc is a kind of conventionally we are writing plus and dot it can be different operation then one should be carefully writing the phi of a plus plus is nothing but the plus in r capital r then uh, phi of a plus this plus is in the right hand side plus is r r prime that addition okay so similarly here dot and uh, here dot is uh, with respect to the ring r and r prime that's one has to be careful here okay <clears throat> where the so when we uh, a yeah, homomorphism is said to be isomorphism if it is a bijective map also in addition to homomorphism it is a bijection bijective map then if there is isomorphism from phi uh, isomorphism from r to r prime then we say that it two rings are said to be isomorphic okay so some trivial remarks the remark says okay so by the first condition in the definition of homomorphism we automatically get uh, phi of 0 to 0 0 goes to 0 okay but uh, since r is not a group under the multiplication we cannot get uh, phi of 1 r goes to 1 r prime okay we have to somehow impose this condition okay so that's that's why we are keeping three conditions so this is uh, okay for us uh, ring r means uh, 1 r always exists inside Okay, this is not a standard uh, definition of a ring. If you check a different uh, book other than the R T in algebra, then one R need not exist in the uh, ring R, in the definition of ring R. Okay, so here we are insisting. Okay, if, um, suppose, and also note that because of this uh, definition, 1R goes to 1R prime, the zero map is not a ring homomorphism anymore unless the R prime is a zero ring. Okay. Why? Because suppose if phi of A is zero for all A in R, uh, then 1R will also go to zero. But uh, 1R should go to 1R prime unless uh, this 0 and uh, 1 r prime is same uh, we cannot uh, say it is a homomorphism according to our definition okay so zero map is not a homomorphism in general unless r prime is zero ring that's what it says so the three condition three is imposed we are imposing it in the definition of homomorphism okay so the one uh, important homomorphism is uh, substitution principle. What is substitution principle? The following proposition. Okay, so first uh, uh, R and R prime are two rings, and uh, a homomorphism between R and R prime phi is given to us. Okay, so give, you fix any element alpha in the r prime uh, ring ring r prime then the claim is that uh, there exists a unique homomorphism capital phi okay F that is phi this is capital phi uh, from the polynomial ring rx to r prime such that when we restrict uh, this capital phi to the ring r then it is nothing but the given map uh, small phi whatever the functional value okay you it, you will get and also this capital phi takes x2 that given uh, the fixed element alpha okay so what it says it says suppose some homomorphism is given ring homomorphism is given from r to r prime and uh, i am fixing an element alpha in r prime the ring r prime then i can find a unique homomorphism uh, from the polynomial ring of Rx, a polynomial ring to the R prime, satisfying two conditions. What is the condition? Condition is that when I restrict the 
function uh, capital phi to the uh, subset uh, subring r okay then i should get back my the given homomorphism phi and also this capital phi takes x to alpha okay so first uh, we prove this okay so by definition we can able to i mean what we want we cook up we, we want to prove that okay there exists a unique homomorphism first we prove that the way the first we define something that is a homomorphism we will prove then we say that it is unique okay so whatever we want we can able to fix uh, correctly you see the capital phi if we define like uh, rx going to r prime uh, by any any element in rx is a polynomial polynomial will look like an x power n plus etc plus a not where a is are coming from the element r uh, the ring r okay so this we write it like this where it uh, it uh, goes to phi of an x power n plus etc phi of an a not uh, here in instead of x it is we are putting alpha alpha power n so the image of capital phi for this element for this polynomial how we are doing it uh, we are doing it like we apply the small phi function on the coefficient and we put x equal to alpha okay that is the way we are defining okay so this is a function okay and we want to check it's a homomorphism or not okay so the homomorphism part is clear so we take two elements uh, in rx uh, polynomial f of x g of x and we add two polynomials and uh, when we add two polynomials we will get another polynomial is like f plus g of x okay the phi of f plus g of x uh, that goes to according to that definition okay so this uh, given a polynomial little f okay little f i am defining phi of f of x is nothing but just i apply the phi function little phi function on the coefficient and uh, i am taking the monomial x power n etc okay same way if f of x is like this then phi of f of x is like this this way okay so this is this will be like this so capital phi of capital f of x plus g of x goes to phi of f plus g of alpha kind of since phi is a homomorphism we can able to write we can break this okay so since a phi is a given to be a ring homomorphism we will get all these three properties uh, from little phi okay so this this using this we can say that this capital phi is also homomorphism okay i hope it is clear is clear right so what we want to kind of uh, prove we taken as a definition of that map okay and we proved that that uh, whatever we defined is a homomorphism ring homomorphism is just okay now we want to prove the uniqueness if psi is another uh, homomorphism from r of x to r any other homomorphism satisfying the condition you see this is with respect to one condition with respect to one condition okay here okay so psi restricted to uh, the ring r subring r is nothing but phi and psi of x goes to alpha okay this is the condition given okay so we want to prove that this psi is same as capital phi how we prove uh, we match uh, for every element of r of x psi of uh, psi of f is same as uh, phi of f okay uh, f is uh, arbitrary element of rx uh, rx is uh, the f is nothing but an x power n plus etc a not so psi of this psi of this psi is a ring homomorphism already it's a homomorphism so therefore this breaks into this way okay so 
this uh, psi of a n x power n etc okay so a n x power n is a polynomial so this is of a ring homomorphism therefore it is uh, this breaks into this way and and uh, psi of uh, and it is a ring homomorphism therefore we can break further psi of a n psi of x whole power n inside okay so uh, then psi of x whole power n again each uh, each one we can uh, break just because it's a uh, given to be a ring homomorphism that is the reason okay so psi of a n is nothing but when uh, psi restricted to the uh, ring r this is nothing but uh, phi value only therefore psi of a n is same as phi of a n and psi of x is same as alpha given to us therefore it is alpha power n so this is same as uh, your uh, the usual capital phi this is the way we define okay i hope it is clear just uh, i am using uh, psi is a ring homomorphism and uh, i am applying and then i am getting back uh, this is nothing but the same uh, image of uh, image value of under capital phi okay therefore this two homomorphisms are one and the same therefore phi is unique okay the same thing one has to do for uh, re several variables okay so several variables when we okay i have not uh, written proof here for uh, how we are going to write proof so same way we have to we have to imitate imitate the same way and uh, we can prove the uh, prove the several variable thing also here this uh, why we call it substitution principle because this homomorphism if you see uh, instead of the variable x we are just putting plugging uh, value alpha given alpha okay that is the reason here i uh, okay so again i have not done for several variable proof in this notes okay you are going to try and we will check it out in the next next means not today next tutorial class okay how we are doing it okay so purposefully i just left it you we have to use the multi index so the i1 i2 in etc how we are going to do so the same way you have to define same way you have to define and you can prove similar way okay okay so this is kind of substitution because x going to alpha that's that that is why it is called substitution principle this principle we are going to use it uh, often in this uh, whole lecture i mean the course what is the remark oh, okay is there any any questions hello yeah you are audible sir yes okay that's fine okay so we have defined something substitution principle we want to apply this substitution principle to some more situation okay so uh, f is uh, so phi is a ring homomorphism from r to r prime r r and r primes are ring uh, phi is a ring homomorphism so given a ring homomorphism we can construct another uh, unique homomorphism from the polynomial ring of r and the uh, to the polynomial ring of r prime okay capital v how just uh, taking uh, capital uh, phi of x to x itself and uh, uh, when we restrict uh, capital phi restrict to uh, the ring r sub sub ring r we get uh, the little phi functional value on the coefficients okay so this how how we are going to get okay so we will apply the substitution property correctly so what is given is uh, just a ring homomorphism from r to r prime that is little phi okay since r r prime is a sub ring of r prime the polynomial ring r prime okay so we have a inclusion map inclusion map is a another homomorphism ring homomorphism okay inclusion map okay. r prime to r prime x that is we call it i 
is a inclusion map now we take a comp composition with little fee okay if the fee composed with i is a function is a homomorphism from r to r prime x is a homomorphism okay fee is a homomorphism already given i is a inclusion map from r prime to r prime uh, the polynomial ring r prime x so by com composing both homomorphism we get uh, another homomorphism from r to r prime x is a homomorphism now we want to use the substitution principle okay so in the substitution principle what uh, we fixed we just recall so we fixed some alpha in r prime r prime is any ring okay so what is given here what is given here given is uh, two rings are given one is capital r uh, another is the polynomial ring on r prime okay these two are rings given and it is a homomorphism i have in the polynomial ring r prime x i have element called x okay i fix that x okay then i apply the substitution principle that means there exists a homomorphism from rx to r prime x sending x to x okay this since uh, i of uh, the the composition map r to r r prime x already gives me the right uh, fee of little fee of an etc this x going to x make sure that this capital fee is nothing but uh, what we wanted okay so given a uh, ring homomorphism from r to r prime we can get a unique homomorphism from the polynomial ring of r to polynomial ring of r prime using substitution principle we apply this to one example so we take cap capital r to be set of uh, the ring of integers z and capital r prime to be the finite field fp fp is z mo z modulo pz p is a prime number is a finite field of p elements okay so we have a ring homomorphism what is the ring homomorphism from z to uh, fp it is uh, any integer n going to any integer n going to what is the ring homomorphism we have n mod p n mod p means we first divide uh, by p and take the least residue okay after dividing there uh, what is a remainder remainder in the division so you take that that is uh, you send it okay that is the that is a homomorphism you can able to check uh, it's a it's a ring homomorphism because this is a field and this is a ring therefore we have two operations you can able to check that it is a ring homomorphism reduction mod p okay so therefore by the remark one once i have a ring homomorphism from two rings then i can extend this to the polynomial rings okay homomorphism so z to fp i have therefore i will get a homomorphism from zx to fpx so zx to fpx what uh, what is that uh, this homomorphism does uh, the homomorphism the co coefficients are reduced modulo p okay so, okay so this is coming from the substitution principle okay just the coefficients are reduced modulo p this is called a, a f you take a polynomial uh, with integer coefficients and uh, you reduce the coefficients modulo p this action is a kind of homomorphism okay so that's what it says when we take this to capital r to be z and the capital r prime to be fp then we can get a reduction mod p this way okay so the using substitution principle we can prove one more so we have a polynomial ring in several variables x1 x2 xm y1 y2 ym these are the variables uh, r is a, any ring this is a this ring is isomorphic to another uh, ring okay first we look at uh, 
capital uh, first polynomial ring with respect to so the variables x1 x2 x1 okay so that is uh, we can call r of x1 x2 uh, the square bracket x1 x2 x1 as some other r prime is a ring because it's a polynomial ring in the variables x1 x2 x1 so this r prime of after that we attach we look at that r prime a polynomial ring in r prime with respect to variables y1 y2 y n okay by doing this and uh, that originally the polynomial ring uh, uh, polynomial polynomial ring with respect to x1 x2 xm and y1 y2 ym with the coefficients are coming from r these two rings are isomorphic okay so in other words there is a unique uh, isomorphism which uh, sends identity which uh, which is an identity on r and sends xi to xi yj to yj okay that's what we want to prove using the substitution principle is it is clear right you can think of you you see any polynomial okay so here uh, i may have to okay suppose if i take uh, f of x comma y two uh, two variable polynomial so you take uh, <coughs> you you take any polynomial in two variable this i can think of first of all uh, with coefficients in integer you assume okay this i can think of uh, it is this is an element of z of x comma y at the same time i can think of this is an element of z of x after that we attach y why we can think of this way anybody can answer do you understand the two different kind of structure at least but it is one and the same but we can view it differently these two structure so for that only i am asking suppose you take uh, some example f of x comma y as uh, uh, y square y square x plus uh, you put some i mean you take some example okay first you think of as an element of uh, z of x comma y polynomial ring in two variable with coefficient coming from integers the another way we can think of the same polynomial as polynomial in one variable with coefficients are coming from polynomial in another variable okay is it clear for you any any polynomial in two variable i can think this two ways if it is clear can you take yes only four b okay so the second structure is not that clear second structure you see the second structure is uh you call this uh, r of x1 x2 xm as r prime this is a ring right r prime is a ring this is a polynomial ring in r yes okay so you replace uh, my writing r of x1 x2 xm by r prime it's a ring uh, then i am attaching new variables y1 y2 ym okay it's a polynomial ring so the coefficients are coming from where r prime r prime is what another polynomial ring with respect to yes. r x1 x2 x3 therefore coefficients lo looks like another polynomial but not in the variable of y1 y2 ym but in terms of x1 x2 x1 okay the coefficients are so both we can view the several variable polynomial in two different way we want to say that both rings are isomorphic okay that is the goal is it clear now yes sir yeah thank you okay so let us prove why this is isomorphic these two rings are okay r is a sub ring of uh, the polynomial ring rx so it is enough to prove for two variables okay so after that we can keep extending the same way what i have done uh, if if i prove for two variables then if you want uh, m variable you just uh, you put uh, r of x1 x2 xm minus 1 that is r prime then again it make it like a, a 
two variable kind of okay it is enough to prove for two variables since r is a subring of rx and rx is a subring of rx of y is it's clear right rx is a ring r prime r prime of y r r prime is a subring for the polynomial ring r prime y therefore rx the polynomial ring is a subring of rx of y okay so therefore r is a subring of this kind of r r of x of y okay so this is the line the third line i mean okay so once it is a subring okay once it is a subring i can take phi to be inclusion map okay inclusion map just to send any element to itself because it is a subring this is inclusion map is a homomorphism therefore by substitution principle okay here i am using the second one okay which we have not uh, at least i have not written the proof okay so i am using the second one in the substitution principle i am going back so whatever we have proved is a the what we are using is the b okay we are using the b so when n equal to 2 we are using so some ring ring homomorphism is given and r of x1 x2 goes to r prime there is a, another unique homomorphism satisfying this condition okay that's what we are using okay so there exists a unique homomorphism capital v from r of x y to r of x of y which sense uh, by taking in the substitution principle alpha 1 to be x because in this uh, the right side ring contains x as well as y so therefore we can fix alpha 1 alpha 2 as x and y so x going to x y going to y so this is by fixing we get a unique homomorphism okay this is one way this is a ring homomorphism we have got one way we want to get another way another homomorphism okay so this how we came we first started with the r is a subring of rx and r of x is a subring of r of x of y therefore r is a subring of r of x of y so, therefore inclusion map we have taken from r to r of x of y this inclusion map is a homomorphism therefore by substitution principle we got a homomorphism from r of x comma y to r of x of y okay we have got a ring homomorphism on the other hand we start with we want to get another other way uh, the ring ring homomorphism r of x of y to r of x comma y okay so how we get r of x is a subring of r of x comma y because you see any polynomial in one variable is uh, is in sitting inside a polynomial in uh, x comma y the two variable okay just by putting y equal to just a ring element okay there is no y appearing that is clearly it is two variable one variable we can think of always think of two variable polynomial also okay therefore it is sitting inside therefore we get a inclusion map okay that is little psi rx to r of x comma y is an inclusion map which is a homomorphism therefore again by substitution principle here we are substitute uh, what uh, we are fixing uh, in the right right hand side what is the ring ring is r of x comma y therefore y l belongs to that that uh, take, we take it to be alpha okay we take it to be alpha then we attach by the substitution principle we get another homomorphism from r of x of y to r of x comma y by sending y goes to y okay already x going to x only why because it's a inclusion map r of x to r of x comma y is an inclusion map therefore x going to x only uh, because this capital psi when we when i restrict to the subring rx this is just a little psi only okay that is a inclusion map so therefore both maps are kind of uh, reverse way but uh, sending x to x and y to y both maps are now we look at the composition we see that uh, it is just identity map 
okay it's uh, only thing notation you have to be careful in writing uh, okay this way first uh, uh, phi composed with this capital psi capital phi composed with capital psi this is uh, from r of x comma y to r of x comma y so any element uh, f of x comma y we can think of any element f of x comma y i can rewrite as a coefficient in x and uh, as a polynomial in y kind of that's what gxy gx of g suffix x of y is nothing but f of x f of x comma y but i have rewritten the f of x comma y as the coefficients are coming from uh, just rx kind of okay Th that is psi i can able to apply the psi if i apply that is uh, y going to y only therefore i get gxy that is gxy again i rewrite as f of x comma y it's kind of cheating but the point is uh, writing correct way okay g of x is nothing but f of x comma y by writing <laughs> polynomial in <clears throat> y variable with the coefficient in rx <clears throat> okay so similarly you can get the other way composition is also identity <coughs> okay so this substitution says <coughs> though it look like uh, two different uh, view point but structure wise uh, both rings are isomorphic okay <coughs> so here in this talk mainly this uh, main uh, important point of thing is that substitution homomorphism that give us the reduction mod p <coughs> when we take uh, integer to fp next uh, another example is this several variable polynomial you can think of two different way or n number of ways <coughs> okay both are isomorphic now <coughs> now we collect uh, we consider the ring of continuous functions from r n to r so r, the script r is the set of all continuous functions on r n uh, with real value the real value uh, continuous functions okay <clears throat> this is a ring with a, with a usual addition and multiplication okay with, this is a ring we we are given uh, we are defining a map from uh, you see this uh, uh, any polynomial polynomial uh, in n variable also we can think of it's a it's a continuous function right okay continuous function on rn to r when we plug uh, of course r values okay so therefore uh, this the polynomial ring in in n variable is really sitting inside uh, the ring uh, script r okay that uh, we are seeing as a it's a in fact a structure i mean ring structure wise it is a, as a sub ring it is sitting inside that's what uh, this particular proposition is saying okay what it says phi is a map we are defining a map from the polynomial ring in n variable to the ring of uh, continuous functions on rn to the r okay that how we are sending we are sending just uh, you take a polynomial uh, any element in uh, the polynomial ring that is that looks like f of x1 x2 xn okay that you send it as a function f polynomial function in rn okay this is an injective homomorphism of rings okay this we have to check okay we will check uh, in the next class okay so here main point is uh, the substitution principle in this so far okay this will be used uh, more often this principle
Yes, sir. Can I stop recording, sir? Yeah.